Okay, so there are some scenarios where learning by doing isn't such a good idea. Abseiling, uh, lion taming, flying a plane. These are scenarios where it's better to really know your theory before you jump in. But in coding or development, getting started on a project is often the best way to really understand all that theory. To see it in context and how it all works, that's what makes all the difference. So whilst it's a good idea to do some background reading, as soon as possible you should start trying to put that theory into practice and come up with some kind of beginner project. And I think a great beginner project is to create some kind of quiz because a quiz is a simple project that you can make easily. It's something rewarding that you can play on your own or with friends and it's something you can change and develop and turn into all kinds of other things. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a Star Wars quiz because everyone's in a Star Wars mood right now. But you could easily turn this into any other kind of quiz or you could turn it into some kind of brain training program or a maths game or a, a, an app that shows you information. So follow along and hopefully you'll learn something, hopefully you'll enjoy the project and read the accompanying article to get a better understanding of what everything does. So this project is aimed at beginners, yes, but beginners with a little bit of background and understanding regarding Java, regarding XML and Android. If you have no prior experience, you can still play along, but I highly recommend that you do some reading in order to understand some of the things that I'm gonna skim over. I will explain a bit, but for a much better understanding, follow the link in the description or just do your own background reading. The whole thing is gonna take seven minutes because that's what I do. And if you get stuck, of course, just use the force. Okay, so in most new apps, you're gonna have an activity, an activity being a page or a screen in your app. And this will be made up of a Java file, in this case, mainactivity.java, and a layout file, in this case, activity underscore main.xml. And the great thing is that if we use the design view by making sure you're on the design tab down the bottom here, that's the text tab, then you can simply drag and drop the different elements you want to onto the screen. And if you select a view, then on the right here, you can change the attributes in the attribute window. You can also change the name of a view by changing the ID, and this will allow us to refer to it later. We're gonna call this one question. Now, if you want to add another text view, we simply drag and drop from here, like so. And we're actually going to have four more. So we're gonna name these answer one, answer two, and answer three. Always a good idea. And that will be called outcome, that bottom one. You need to anchor all four sides to either the edge of the display or another view that's anchored. And that's nice and easy. We are gonna add one more thing though, and that's an on click for these. See? So we wanna click view all attributes in our attribute window here, and we'll call this on answer one click. And what this is gonna do is allow us to refer to what happens when someone clicks on this in our code. Can you guess what this one will be called? On answer two click and on answer three click. Okay, so there's lots of different ways we could approach making a quiz, but I think we should use a map. And seeing as I'm kind of in charge, that's probably what we're gonna be doing. So Okay, so with that in mind, we need to create our map. And we do that like so. So we're saying a map with two strings. That's the key in the value. We're gonna call our map questions. We're gonna say new hash map string string brackets. Now you'll notice these are red. If you find things red like this, just click on them and press Alt and Enter. That imports a new class. So I won't go into what that means. Okay, next we're gonna create a new integer which is a whole number, and we're gonna call that question no. And as you can probably guess, that's gonna to refer to which question we're on. And the next thing we need to do is create our views. Text view outcome. Text view question. Text view answer one. Okay, next we need to tell our code that those views are the ones we've defined earlier in the XML. And we do that by saying, find view by ID, R meaning resource, answer one, remember we used capitals there. And then we can do the same thing for answer two and answer three. And we're also gonna to wanna to do the same thing for the question. And we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing for our outcome. Okay, now we're gonna to need to populate our map. That means putting in our questions and answers. And we do that by saying questions, remember that's what we called the map, put, and then we can say question one, that's the key. And then the value might be what is Kylo Ren's real name. There's some I made earlier. You can steal mine from the article on the site or write in your own. 
Notice that I've got right one, wrong A1, wrong B1. So we're using this number and we need to be consistent with the naming conventions here. And you're gonna see why in a moment. Okay, so now we're gonna create a new method called set question. So that's red for now because that's not actually a normal command. And we're gonna say private void, which means that it's a method that doesn't need to be accessed by other parts of the program. So to assign those questions and answers to our views, we go like so, question set text, which is a way of changing the text, questions get, so questions remember is our map, and then we need to use our key to retrieve that. We're gonna get that with question and then plus question no. So that's gonna change as the question goes up. And then we need to do the same thing of course for the answers. And we're gonna do one more thing here as well, and that's to set a tag for answer one. And that's gonna be correct. Okay, the next thing I want to do is to create another method. This one will be a public method because we're using it from outside this script. And it's called on answer one click, and it has view v there as well. And here we're just gonna say if answer one get tag is equal to correct, then we execute this bit of script, which is to say on our outcome, set text, well done. And then we're going to reset our questions, but only after we've iterated the question number. So now it's moved on to question two or three, and then we're gonna say set question again. Otherwise, else, outcome, set text, try again to our view which just means whichever view happens to have been clicked. And the reason for that is because it makes it much easier for us to just copy and paste this and put in our on answer two click and on answer three click. Again, there are quicker and better ways of doing this. We could, for instance, have a global on click and then look for that tag. And that's really the reason to be doing that. However, I'm keeping things simple here just so you can follow along. And this is the easiest way to do it. Okay, so all that's really left to do now is to change the order so that it's not always the same. And for that, we're gonna need a random number. You'll need to import that class, by the way. And we get that by writing this. r.nextint3. There we go. And then we can say if value one equals zero. So that's gonna have a value of zero to two because it starts at zero. Three options starting at zero. I think we want double equals there. Okay, and then we can say else if value one equals one, then we put our correct answer and our tag in the second position and else if value one equals two, then the correct answer and tag go in the third position. It doesn't really matter where the wrong answers are. And there you go. And of course, again, there are better ways of doing this. What I would actually do is enter that data into a list and then shuffle the list using a, a good random algorithm. But again, for simplicity's sake, this will work just fine. And there you have a complete working quiz in just seven minutes. So there, red's at the bottom now. Well done, a new hope. There's more to do, obviously. At the moment, it'll crash when you get to the end of the list, so you need to do something about that. And of course, we wanna make it look nicer. And you'll do that in the XML, and you can change the background. And I set a Star Wars logo at the top. You can do that by just using an image view, for instance. And you can mess around with your colors by going to the values and go to the colors XML, change the, the scheme, mess around with it as you like. But that's the basic bones, the bare bones of your quiz. And of course you can change the questions and the topic to be anything you like. But if you make a horticulture quiz, then you can probably assume you're gonna have fewer people wanting to play. So you found this video useful and interesting guys. If you did, then please leave a like, please share it around and let me know in the comments what you thought, if you get stuck or if you have any requests for future videos. Of course, stay tuned to androidauthority.com, hit the bell button for notifications and check out the website for we are your source for all things Android.